Let's welcome in Bill Orem from The Athletic. He covers the Los Angeles Lakers. Look, Anthony Davis, he's been the talk of the NBA the past couple of days since requesting that trade from New Orleans. Uh, still hasn't happened. Trade deadline is on Thursday at 3 o'clock. Is this deal going to get done before then? I mean, I think there's a lot of skepticism that there's going to be a deal between the Lakers and Pelicans before the trade deadline. I've talked to a lot of people around the Lakers who, um, certainly not the people who are, are proposing the trade, but just people who are um, part of the team, traveling with the team, who are just skeptical that there's a deal that can be made uh, before the trade deadline. Everybody understands that the Pelicans have a lot of options and will have more if they can wait till the summer when Boston gets involved, and which is why you're hearing so much about this deal right now. There are people on LeBron James's side who are trying to facilitate a deal to the Lakers to create it to create the impression that there is not um, that, that Anthony Davis is not interested in being anywhere else and scare other teams off. Uh, we've not seen that work around the NBA. Teams have been willing to take take the risk on guys with one one year left. You saw it with Paul George, Kawhi Leonard. So I think it's unlikely that that um, 29 other teams or 28 other teams are going to be scared off by this. But uh, they're trying their darndest right now to make it seem like um, that Anthony Davis to the Lakers is, is absolutely inevitable. But really at this point, it isn't. Let's say the Lakers don't trade for Anthony Davis before Thursday. Uh, what's plan B? Well, I mean, I think plan B is to um, preserve all the cap, cap space you can and get into the summer and, and, and do your best to attract one of those other guys who's available. In the meantime, I think there will be smaller deals that they'll pursue, look to add shooters um, who, can, who can help them on the perimeter. I mean, obviously, this is a team that ranks uh, – at or near the bottom of the league in, in three-point shooting. This is something that they they knew going into the year when they after they'd added okay. Rajon Rondo, Michael Beasley, Lance Stevenson, not shooters. So for the Lakers, if they can if they can get a little help on the perimeter, a more traditional unit around LeBron James, um, that would go a long way. But it, it really is either um, big blockbuster for a superstar really at this point, or or small moves around the margins just to just to help them get through this season. But there won't be that kind of middle tier deal. Uh, where they'd be taking on somebody else's money. They are they are really reluctant to do that. Hey, Bill, Karan Butler here. Just want to pivot away from the Anthony Davis discussion for a second. And just talk about the morale of the ball club right now, the young guys, the young nucleus. Dealing with all the trade rumors, how are they adjusted? Yeah, I mean, it, it, so far they've shown that they've been pretty good. I mean, Lonzo Ball is one guy we haven't had a chance to really see in this environment. He's been he's been away from the team, obviously, with his sprained ankle. He's at the forefront of all these trade uh, uh, trade rumors. Kyle Kuzma I talked to before the game, and he said that he was keeping his head clear that um, that you know, it hadn't really affected him yet at this point. You know, all these guys are in touch with their agents. Luke Walton said that he has talked to some of these guys individually, but uh, I think I think it's one of those things where guys want to see something more concrete before they let this totally worry them. But of course it's human nature. It's it's it sneaks in there where you start to wonder, you know, am I going to get traded? Is is my time here going to be done? Am I going to be part of what they're building here? But um, you know, everybody played pretty well against the Clippers on Thursday. Obviously, it changed a little bit last night when the reports went from the the theoretical of what the Lakers might do to reports of offers that were actually on the table. But from what I've seen, um, you know, the, the the Lakers, the young Lakers nucleus has has kept their heads on pretty straight and they went through this a bit last year obviously going through the trade deadline watching Larry Nance and Jordan Clarkson get dealt to Cleveland. Um, so I think there is I think there is kind of an awareness of the business side of this and trying not to let it get too emotional. Bill, have you been have you seen any visible uh, frustration from these young guys? I mean, as we we're talking about Jason Hart, Kyle Kuzma, Brandon Ingram, Lonzo Ball, they're all fantastically young. Have you seen any visible frustration and have you been offered up to the Pelicans yet? <laughs> uh, I love New Orleans. They can have me, please. I, I'm, I'm gonna have. I think I'm gonna have four nights in New Orleans in the spring due to the Lakers' travel schedule. I'll take more. I'll take a playoff series. I'll take an entire season. Um, I have a lot of restaurants I can't get to in four nights. Um, uh, that said, uh, to your first question, I, I really haven't seen where the young guys have shown that they've been too affected by this or frustrated. I think the frustration came when they were losing games before LeBron came back, when they were losing those games to teams like the Knicks and the Cavaliers. It was a really brutal stretch for that team, and, and I think that's where you saw – them start to get frustrated maybe there would have been a chance of fracturing in the locker room but LeBron I think came back at just the right time uh the Lakers had fallen to ninth in the west uh they're still there but obviously have climbed back to uh within 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 a game of the of the of the Clippers before their win today so I think that they're in, in terms of this unit staying together I think they've done a good job up to this point LeBron returned on Thursday played 40 minutes now sitting out tonight did he stay on the court too long uh in that first game back I mean, I think the game went too long. It would have been better for the Lakers, obviously, if if they could have uh, finished the 
the Clippers off in regulation. Maybe if JaVale McGee had been able to put down that dunk or um, if LeBron had not turned the ball over on that final drive. But obviously, you know, 40 minutes, he hadn't played in five weeks. Uh, it's not really that surprising in a game that was going to be a tall order for this Lakers team anyway. Get him some rest. Let him let him get recover. The Lakers don't play for another two days when they are in Indiana on Tuesday. Uh, big final stretch before the playoffs, or excuse me, before the before the All-Star break as they try to as they try to get to the playoffs. They go to Boston, uh, excuse me, Indiana, Boston, Philly, and then the Hawks right before the All-Star break. That is a tough stretch. And if LeBron James is going to really get the Lakers to to the postseason, which obviously is not a guarantee at this point after the 6-11 and stretch when he was injured, um, they need him to be his absolute best for those games and hopefully go in and steal one in Boston or Philly, uh, which are very difficult places for him to play, obviously. Yeah, I definitely felt like he should have had some type of minutes restrictions after being out so long. But I will ask you, you know, per Woj, and we saw the first report of the trade, I'm going to put it in your court. Who do you trade, and what are you willing to part ways with to acquire Anthony Davis? I mean, I, I wrote this earlier this week. I think whatever the Pelicans want, the Lakers should, should be prepared to give. It is hard to get that second superstar. We know that teams have been reluctant to deal with the Lakers. They don't want to see a super team in L.A. And so if the Pelicans are willing to make a deal, even if it, even if it causes you to completely empty your cupboards, I think ha- having having LeBron James, the best player in the league right now, the best player of this generation, and then a superstar, a 25-year-old superstar in Anthony Davis to kind of build around in the future, um, you, you, you probably make whatever deal the, the Pelicans ask for, even if it's all the young guys. The problem is, um, you know, obviously we saw the reports they started with what was considered a low ball offer, um, and, they'll, and they'll go from there. I would expect as we get closer to Thursday's deadline, the Lakers' offer will continue to increase. I mean, obviously it wouldn't make sense for them to come out day one, say take everything, um, because then you'd live the rest of your life wondering if you could have gotten him for less. But uh, I think the Pelicans are holding out for that, that maximum offer, and I would be very surprised if by you know, 11.59 Pacific time on Thursday, the Lakers aren't saying, okay, okay, whatever you want. Because to get that second guy, especially looking at this free agent class in, two, in 2019 this summer, Kawhi Leonard, Kyrie, uh, Clay Thompson, Kevin Durant, Jimmy Butler, none of those guys feel like real fits with the Lakers or don't haven't really given the indications that they are interested in coming and playing with LeBron James. Anthony Davis wants to play with LeBron James. So if you can get him, I think that really no matter the cost, you have to make it happen, as painful as it would be to part with uh, such, a, such a massive group of, of young, talented players. Bill Orm from The Athletic, thank you for your time. Lakers, Warriors at 830, no LeBron James, but a lot of Anthony Davis talk. Appreciate it. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, guys.